Hello there. It has been a hot second since we've done a Q&A on this channel. In fact, it has been since the very beginning of this channel, because if any of you remember, the very first video I ever uploaded over a year and a half ago at this point was in fact a Q&A. And since then, I haven't really done anything like it. So today, I thought we might update some of the answers I gave a year and a half ago, as well as answer new and interesting questions that I receive on the regular. Now I sourced these from you on Instagram over the course of this week, and we have some good ones. Also, I would like to note that the ever wonderful James Hoffman did a Q&A about a week and a half ago. This is slightly inspired by that, and if you wanna go check that out, I highly recommend you do. It's very informative. I don't know if this will be quite as informative, but I think it will be fun at the least. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go grab some coffee. Let's sit down, let's get started. Welcome to the sitting angle. So I have compiled quite a few questions and I picked them for two reasons. One, ones that I would think would be either interesting and or educational. And second, ones that were asked most frequently. And I have kind of two categories here. I have the coffee slash barista category. And I also have a personal category because y'all have a lot of questions about me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it might be time to enlighten you on some things. And also a huge thank you to everyone who sent in questions. Uh, this is very exciting and it's, it's fun to see what things you guys want to learn more about. Let's just start at the top and work our way down. Beginning with Captain Coffee Crafts, who asks how to get into slash start a barista job. Any basic requirements? This is a very good question. Now, frequently I get questions about what sort of training should I do before I apply or how can I prepare myself or what should I read? And those are all very good questions because you are thinking about the knowledge aspect of what companies will want you to know before you start your job so they don't have to, you know, train you as much, which is, you know, always a nice thing. It saves them money and it makes you a little bit more prepared to start the job. However, I never want to answer those with direct recommendations because I think the main thing you need before starting a barista job or even applying is just truly enthusiasm. You'll find more often than not cafes and or coffee companies will be more than happy to train you. In fact, a lot of people prefer to train new people because you don't have to untrain habits that they might deem as bad or might not be the way that they do things. So coming in with enthusiasm and passion for whatever you're about to start is a lot better than I think coming in with just oodles and oodles of knowledge that, you know, may be applicable or may not be. That's not to say that additional trainings and or information isn't helpful. It's definitely like a perk on your resume, but I don't think it's like the initial thing you should be focusing on. I think you should be focusing on why you want to do the job rather than what are the nitty gritties of how I'm going to do the job. Next question from user Brayden R. Hale. And they ask, is there a good way to develop a more refined coffee palette? How do you learn to taste all the notes? My answer is eat and taste and drink everything you can get your hands on. I mean, within reason, <laughs> very much within reason. But honestly, the main thing about developing a coffee palette is kind of gaining that encyclopedia of knowledge of what just things taste like, whether that's spices or herbs or fruits or vegetables or like smoky things or spicy things or, or any of that. Really the best way to develop the ability to taste different notes in your coffee is to already have those tastes locked away. That way, when you are, let's say, tasting a coffee that is chocolatey, you don't just describe it as chocolatey, even though that would, of course, be a good descriptor. You're able to get a little bit deeper into it. Let's say, is it a milk chocolate? Is it a dark chocolate? Is it baker's chocolate? Is it like a 70% cacao? Like, what is the deeper notes of that coffee? And the only way you're able to get to that point is to have tasted all those things. So this is me giving you license to go just eat all the things. and. Think about them. Taste with intentionality when you are having a variety of things that you haven't had before. Think about what emotions those things make you feel or what sensations they make you feel or what flavors or what smells come with them. That's the best way, in my opinion, to develop a coffee palate is just to eat everything and then think about those things that you have eaten when you are drinking your coffee. User at Sleepy Sheepy asks, what is your favorite method of making coffee? This is a good question. I am an espresso person through and through. I love espresso. I love all the drinks that come with espresso. I love espresso straight up. But if we're talking not espresso, if we're talking in the drip coffee sort of category, I've got like a pretty deep love for like batch brew and or just like traditional drip coffee. I think the consistency and efficiency that comes with it is just like a wonderful thing. And of course, pour overs are very fun. I have several different brewers that are really fun to mess around with. You have all that like ability to play with them. You have customizability, you have all sorts of things, but I do love how just predictable making a batch of drip coffee is. So that would probably be my all time favorite. And uh, 
Speaking of coffee, I need to go grab some more. So while I do that, I wanna give a quick thank you to our partner for today's video. I wanna give a huge thank you to Vessi for partnering with me on today's video. Now this week is especially exciting because Vessi just released their brand new Everyday Move sneaker. Vessi's have always been some of my favorite shoes to wear anywhere from work to my everyday, but this shoe is especially great because it has added support and a sportier look. And one of my favorite features about Vessi's, at least for me, is that they're 100% waterproof and made from a lightweight diamond text knit material, which means that when mistakes, puddles, or more often in my case, spills happen, my feet stay dry. This makes them the perfect barista shoe as well as the perfect everyday shoe. And their herringbone tread pattern makes them extra grippy and safe even when I'm slipping around the cafe, which happens more than I'd like to admit. So if you wanna match with me and get your own pair of Vessies, I got you because Vessi is giving my subscribers $25 off your purchase when you click the link below and enter code MDC. That's code MDC after you click the link in the description. And thank you again to Vessi for sponsoring today's video. Much better. Let's continue. User at Nugos says, not a question, but every time you post a story, I keep thinking it's Freddy from iCarly. I mean, I'll take that over young Sheldon, which is the other one I get more often than I'd like to admit. <laughs> User emily.signs.92 says, is it okay for a teenager to drink coffee for energy or should they find alternatives until college? I was a teenager who drank coffee. So in that sense, I don't have much room to say otherwise. However, I would caution you to think about why and how much coffee you are drinking. I think you get a little bit into the danger zone when you start using coffee exclusively for caffeine or energy. I might suggest you take a look at the amount of sleep you're getting or your, the other nutrition in your life. However, coffee in general, as a younger person, maybe between the ages of 16 or older, because that's when I started drinking coffee, I think that is fine. I just think moderation, of course, is the key to everything. I will never forget the very first time when I was 16, I received my driver's license and I drove immediately to Starbucks and ordered a caramel macchiato. <laughs> Pretty sure that was like my very first coffee ever. Like I did not grow up in a family that drank coffee. So that caramel macchiato really was like, it was just like straight to the bloodstream. <laughs> User, bear with me here. Fareed Fretchen, hope I'm saying that correctly, asks, what is the best way to get espresso-like coffee as a broke student? A mocha pot or otherwise? Well, first I would always recommend a mocha pot. I always think they're a great affordable way to break into something that is similar to espresso. A mocha pot will brew something that's kind of in between drip coffee and espresso. It is, it's something that is like a thicker, more concentrated liquid, but it's not brewed under the pressure that, you know, espresso would be, but it's a nice, it is as they're asking a good substitute. Now, mocha pots do require you have heat or a stove top or like a burner of some sort. So that can be like, you know, that can be something that people don't have. And in that case, I would go with an AeroPress. They're another, you know, easily like storable, affordable way. And there are recipes out there where you can brew things that are decent espresso substitutes. User Robin underscore H underscore Denton asks, do you prefer washed or natural processed coffees? I actually really love naturally processed coffees. They were, and I think this is true for a lot of baristas, they were one of the first like coffees that I ever had. I had this natural processed coffee. I believe it was like from Costa Rica and it was just straight blueberry. And I was like a baby barista at the time. And in that moment, that was the first coffee that I had tasted that I was able to go, I know what this tastes like. Like I'm able to pick up those tasting notes. And that was a really, really cool experience because I was struggling a lot with palate development. So because of that reason, I really love natural coffees. I have a lot of really fond memories associated with them. That being said, I think they are sometimes a little bit more finicky. Like I have also had some very like bad naturally processed coffees. Like the way they were roasted was not the way I want it to be. And it's a flavor profile that can kind of get a little wonky pretty easily. So while I do have a very strong love for naturally processed coffees, I do think there is a lot of consistency that comes with the wash process. And that's also very nice. So I like them both, but I am also someone who kind of, I do, I do lean a little bit more towards like naturally processed coffees. I think that's my answer. User Strackbine Elizabeth asks, if your life took a different direction, what direction would you want it to take? Interestingly enough, my life almost did take a very different direction. And because I'm online, the entire internet got to watch it happen. <laughs> so when I went to college, I went to college and received my bachelor's in marketing. And the entire time that I was in school, what I wanted to do was something in the world of social media marketing, whether that was content creation or digital strategy or advertising or whatever it was, I wanted to be in the digital space and I wanted to do fun, creative things for companies. Now, of course, right as I graduated, the, the this, 
happened to the world and we are now stuck in a panini for lack of a better term. And so staying in coffee and working for a coffee company and doing social media marketing for them wasn't a super viable option because at that point when I was looking for jobs, the food and bev industry was in shambles for lack of a better word. And so I searched for jobs outside of food and bev and I ended up finding a job as a social media specialist at a startup that was completely unrelated to coffee. And at that point I decided, all right, I think I'm, I think I'm done. I, I'm doing this Morgan drinks coffee thing. And you know, it was a, it was a good hobby and I really loved it, but it's time to get the, the real job is what I told myself. So I basically stopped doing most of my content creation. Someone very loud is driving by, so that's fun. I stopped pretty much all my content creation and I went full stop into like a nine to five startup social media marketing specialist sort of position. And it was a good learning experience. However, I learned pretty quickly that that's not what I wanted to do. And so I was privileged enough to be in a position where I was able to make Morgan Drinks Coffee my full-time gig. I also went back to being a barista part-time and here we are today, almost a year later at this point. However, if I hadn't made that decision to jump back into the coffee space, I think I would have made that decision eventually. If I didn't have Morgan Drinks Coffee, I would probably at this point be working in social media marketing or advertising in some sort of like much larger coffee or coffee adjacent company but I very much enjoy what I'm doing now and I'm very grateful to all of you for making it possible. User skelly.bones with the zero asks, what is your worst customer experience? Well, I got maced once. <laughs> So far that's been the worst and I'm not eager for anyone to top that experience. <laughs> At user praise Satan it's Friday, which fantastic username by the way asks, any places you want to go and sample coffee in the world? Good question. Ideally I would like to go everywhere in the world and sample coffee. But if I had to pick one, it would probably be Italy. I think that would be very fun. I'm actually gonna go potentially next year. Very excited about that. So I will be drinking all the espresso in Italy. How do you manage everything on your own? Like, do you have other people helping you? I used to do pretty much everything for Morgan Drinks Coffee on my own, which is what I'm assuming they're referring to. I did all the ideation for videos. I did all the filming, all the editing, all the managing of any sort of like sponsorships. <laughs> <laughs> what I was trying to say was partners. Oh, that's partnerships slash sponsorships. That was really hard to get up. Anyways, I used to do all of that by myself and I did for a very long time. However, when I made the decision to do Morgan Drinks Coffee as my full-time job, pretty much, I had to sit back and like actually think about what I was capable of doing and how sustainable it would be. Because believe me, I think the reason a lot of creators burn out and they burn out really quickly is there is a lot of demand for just constant content. And there's so many other things that go into it besides like ideation and emails and busy work and just all sorts of like nitty gritty stuff. And I realized that if I was gonna do Morgan Drinks Coffee full time, I needed help, which was a tough thing to recognize, but it was super important. So now I have a small team of people kind of adjacent to me that are super, super helpful and make this a viable thing for me to do. I have a wonderful manager and a small team that handles my like sponsorships and brand deals and they are amazing. I also have a video editor and he's amazing. And it's really, really helpful because it takes a lot off of my plate so I can focus more on like what the next video is instead of how do I sync up this audio. Uh, my partner also helps with a lot of stuff and and yeah, so there's a little team, but for the most part, it's still kind of like me sitting at the helm of it and like just trying to offload the very few things that kind of make my life a little bit more difficult. At Vincent Nalivery asks, what is the weirdest customer order you have received? I once had someone ask for a steamed cold brew. I still think about that one sometimes. User at Mundy Ruckus asks, what is the gateway coffee drink? Well. For me personally, even though a caramel macchiato was the very first coffee drink I ever had, so maybe you could say that was my true gateway drink, I would say mochas are the most like standard gateway drink because if you think about it, it is caffeinated hot chocolate and there is nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Actually for a very, very long time and my old coworkers and at the cafe I used to frequent can testify this, a 16 ounce mocha with whole milk, that was my standard. For, for so many years, I just, mochas were like my go-to and eventually like I branched out and tried other things, but I think that's a very like comfortable, delicious, like tasty drink that almost every cafe will have. And I think it's a great like way to get started if you are perhaps someone who wants to drink coffee, but doesn't want to immediately dive into black coffee because there are very few people who can do that and enjoy it. At Maddie underscore McDonald 24 says, favorite coffee mug? I've got two answers for you. And one of them is right in front of me. This is, this is an ember mug. So it's one of those mugs that you are able to put on a little 
coaster that is also a heating element and it will also have a heating element inside. So I have an app and I'm able to decide how hot I want my coffee to be and this mug will keep my coffee at that temperature. It was a very bougie, bougie purchase. This thing is kind of expensive, but I also adore it and I think it's wonderful and I recommend it to anyone who's even thinking about getting it. There are many reviews on YouTube about this mug. So I do not think I will ever make my own, but this is my my recommendation for the Ember mug. I think it's wonderful. I do also have a to-go mug that I very much like. This is my go-to to-go mug. This is the Carter from Fellow Products. Um, it's great. I love the color, it has a really nice feel to it. It also has this little, this little piece inside. So let's say I am driving and commuting in a car. I'm able to put this inside. I'm able to leave my lid off and set it next to me so I can very easily like drink coffee in the car without worrying about my coffee like sloshing everywhere. So it's a nice little stopper. These are my favorite mugs. <laughs> Actually, scratch that. I also have this one that says, I'd rather be staring into the void. It's one I bought from Stumptown like four years ago, I think at this point. Um, I just like, just like this one. I, I don't really know what the message is, but I quite enjoy whatever it is. At ZRFFE says, portable coffee equipment for adventurers, question mark. I mentioned it before, but I think an AeroPress is a great portable coffee equipment to take with you. It's a great little brewer. It makes really nice coffee. It is easy to use and it's easy to pack up. That being said, if I may also sway you towards some instant coffees. I know that that sounds bad at first, but there are a lot of really, really delicious instant coffees nowadays. There's a lot of roasters and coffee companies who are making them and they're making them really tasty. Uh, Black and White Roasters actually has some that I really, really enjoy. So if you're looking for a starting place for like, kind of like nicer instant coffee, Black and White Roasters, great place. User Redron OC asks, what is your favorite meme? Well, I have two that instantly come to mind. The first one is the like, Elmo in hell meme. If you guys know the one where he's like standing in flames and he's like, like, I really like that one. I think that one is, <laughs> is a very good meme. The other one that like sticks with me and I think about like, not on a daily basis, but on probably like a, like a bi-weekly basis is gonna be the surprise Pikachu one where he's like, I think that one is also, <laughs> I think also that is a very good meme. So those are my two favorite memes. I also like, this is random. This is not at all even my favorite meme, but do you all remember when just like, John Cena was the punchline to like everything. I think this was like, this had to be like 2015 or 2016. I just remember being in high school and every single video I watched baited you into like seeing John Cena at the end of it. Dark times. Cup of Jomo Coffee asks, biggest pet peeve that's a trend in modern coffee shops that you wish would stop? Good question. Now, when I go to coffee shops or cafes, I try to enter them with like kind of no expectation because in my mind, each cafe is very different and they have license to do whatever they want. And we're not inherently entitled to like a certain syrup flavor or layout or any of those things because the owners make it the way they want to and that's great. I'll, I'll take I'll take the coffee shop where you have it. <laughs> that being said, you know those like, those bar stools that are all metal and they're like kind of square on top and they're and it's just they're very uncomfortable and i will try to find a photo and like place it on the side i think they look all right but as someone who has spent like three plus hours sitting on them they hurt so much so if we could find a way to you know maybe add some cushioning or some sloping to the seat <laughs> anything honestly to make it a little bit more comfortable that would be wonderful. And I see them everywhere and I know they look nice and they are probably very affordable, but they hurt my pelvic bone. So there is that. A Julia Marie writes asks, recent favorite book you've read? Well, I've got a couple, let me go get them. <laughs> okay, so directly answering this question, my favorite book that I have recently read would probably be these two, either The Final Girl Support Club and or A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and its sequel, which I don't own in a physical copy. Two thrillers slash mysteries very good, very like, I describe them as like snacky books. Like I think I read both of these uh, in one day. Uh, they're easily digested and just really fun reads. Now, if you were asking me my favorite book of all time, I would give it to American Gods by Neil Gaiman. This is a fantastic read. Honestly, anything by Neil Gaiman is fantastic, but this would be my all time favorite book of ever. Some other things I really like, the Darth Bane trilogy uh, from Star Wars Legends. This is a fantastic trilogy, even if you don't like Star Wars. Although you might not understand it if you don't like Star Wars, so there is that. The Scythe trilogy, 
Fantasy, very good. And my favorite childhood book, which I also own a copy of, is Frindle by Andrew Clements. This is a fantastic read, even if you are not a child or young reader. For anyone who doesn't know, I'm very big into reading and book collecting, so I've got quite a few books over there. Uh, the main categories I read are fantasy, science fiction, mystery thrillers, and I, I do love myself a good bit of romance as well, so fun facts about me. Madeline Rose says, sorry if you've done this before, but how do you make good latte art with non-dairy milk? Well, it depends sometimes on what sort of non-dairy milk you're using, you know, whether it is oats or hemp or rice or almond or soy or whatever, even, you know, down to the brand of what you're using. However, the main, most general piece of advice that I think applies to all of those is to add slightly more air than you would to whole milk. Whole milk is incredibly creamy, it's rich and it's fatty and it holds air really nicely, which is why we kind of use it as the default in most cafes. However, even barista series formulated alternative milks can sometimes struggle to hold air as nicely as whole milk does, which is why you need to add a little bit more of it. So stretch it for a little bit longer, add a tiny bit more aeration, and then really focus on pushing that air and swirling it through the rest of your milk for the remaining time you're steaming it. Jimmy Dude 5130 asks, what do you do on your time off? Good question. I do a lot of writing <laughs> and I also do a lot of reading. Uh, I have this wild dream of someday publishing some books maybe. So I'm working on those as a side project alongside all my video stuff, but also I do a ton of reading. I like book collecting. I, as I mentioned before, I have a bunch of favorite genres. And so I dive into those mostly on my time off. Now I say I have this pipe dream of publishing a book, but to do that, I understand that you have to actually let other people read what you've done. And I'm not sure if I'm there yet. Pluto himself asks, I don't like getting coffee, but I'm getting tired of chai lattes. Any fun suggestions? Uh, something I would keep an eye out that some cafes have is something called golden milk. And it is a spice blend that is turmeric based that they steam usually with milk and potentially some sweetener. It is very nice. It is non-caffeinated and it's just, it's warming and delicious and wonderful. Uh, the other thing I would recommend is potentially trying some other tea lattes. Uh, in most coffee shops, they will have a tea selection and they'll be able to make a tea latte, which would be like about half the amount of normal water with a tea bag and then you would put maybe a sweetener if you liked and then steamed milk on top in the format of a London fog but you can do it with any type of tea and that's kind of like my favorite non-coffee like cafe drink that I would order. Jesslyn.g3 asks, opinions on the elitism some people display in specialty coffee slash trying to change that. It's tricky. You know, I think my online presence has always been about kind of like showing that coffee is fun and can be fun and should be fun. I, I don't think there are, you know, rules when it comes to coffee. I think coffee is however you want to enjoy it. I think it's a wonderful thing that brings people together and brings people a lot of joy. And I think also cafe spaces offer that. And really that's what I wanna share with other people. Like I found a deep love for cafes and coffee and I think they're awesome. They make me really happy and I want other people to experience that. I don't want to, you know, police what people should do with their coffee or how they have it. So I don't know if that explains anything. Uh, I think it sucks when people gatekeep or are, you know, potentially like pretentious about coffee, especially coffee knowledge. I think it's something we should share and all enjoy together. So there's that. But Frista asks, what milk pitchers and apron do you use? Let me show you. I have a pretty extensive selection of pictures that I own myself and I use at home and sometimes I take them into the cafe if I'm feeling like extra in that day. But the main ones I have, uh, these ones, both the handleless and this larger like round spout pitcher, these are from Slow Pour Supply. Um, I know the owner, she is amazing. It's a really, really cool company. And if you are looking for a wide variety of pitchers or one you want to purchase for yourself, Slow Pour Supply is awesome and I highly recommend them. Uh, the other one I like, I believe is from Barista Hustle. I've had this one for a while and I like it as well. So this is a nice picture if you're looking for something maybe a little bit smaller. Now my apron, uh, this, this ratty thing right here is from Amazon. I've had it for quite a while and I am very sorry to say that I saw the listing got taken down in the last like six months. So when this apron breaks and or falls apart from overuse, I'm gonna have to switch. So if you have any apron brand suggestions, I am more than happy to hear them because I don't think I'm getting a second one of these. Katie Murray says, is it easy for baristas to identify another barista in a coffee shop? 
If so, how? <laughs> I actually think of two things when I hear this question. One of them is an order and the other one is a question. If you come up to me while I'm working on register and you say, what's on espresso today? I immediately am going to assume you're a barista. <laughs> that is like that is like the standard question. The other thing that I get a lot from specifically like coffee professionals is the order of they're getting an espresso for here and then an eight ounce drip coffee to go. That seems to be a very, very standard like coffee barista person order. Uh, and it's really funny when I hear it because immediately I just want to be like, what shop do you work at? <laughs> it's like a sixth sense at this point where I kind of like spot them a mile away when they walk in. So for this next question, I can't even pick one singular person because this was very, very frequently asked by everyone in all sorts of formats. And that is, how do I do my hair? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had some sort of secret answer for you. Uh, my hair is naturally very dry. It is very curly, uh, despite what it looks like right now. And I do just a, just a few things. So first off, I almost never shampoo my hair. Like I shampoo my hair like once every like month, <laughs> which sounds a little bit embarrassing to say, but it works for me. That being said, I do like shower and condition it every single day. So I do that. I get out of the shower. I have this like curl cream. It's called Simply Curls. I just find my part, I kind of scrunch the curl cream in and then I just let it air dry. So that's about it. I wish I was fancier. I wish I had more secrets to tell you, but that is the the day-to-day -day routine. <laughs> Nessa Perez 31 asks, what are some practices you use after dealing with a difficult customer? A couple of things. While dealing with a dif difficult customer, I think the main thing I'm always thinking about is how to kind of de-escalate the situation. So if someone is in a bad mood and they're taking it out on me, my goal is to kind of kill them with kindness so they're not able to actually get mad at me and kind of realize that that like frustration is like internalized. Uh, the other thing I will always try to do if it is like a situation where let's say they're frustrated because I don't have a certain syrup or a size or like whatever it is, if it's like specific to what I am doing for them, uh, my method is always offering alternatives to kind of like keep them moving. I think if you let customers kind of like simmer on what's wrong or what they're missing. I think that's where you can get like some frustration and anger. But if like, let's say they want caramel and you don't have caramel, maybe offer them other syrups that you would use as a recommendation to just kind of keep them like, keep them moving, if you will. Now, after, if you're dealing with a difficult customer, you could do what I do and make TikToks. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I do my best to remind myself that it's probably not me that they're mad at. There is probably something else going on in their day. That's probably the issue. And I was just a vehicle that they could take it out on wrongfully, of course. But you know, I like to remember that it's not personal and I only had to see them for like three minutes and now they're gone and hopefully they have a better time next time they come in. And finally, the last question that I will answer today is one that I've gotten quite frequently for a while now. And that is, will you ever open up your own cafe because whether people know this or not, the entire time that I have filmed videos and TikToks, I don't own any of the places I work at. Like I'm still a an hourly wage like barista at shops. But the question always stands, will you ever open up your own shop? It does seem like the logical progression, doesn't it? Well, I won't lie, it is something that I think about quite often. If if I did it, it would be a combined space. It would absolutely be a bookstore cafe. <laughs> I'll tell you that much now, but it's not something I think I'm ready to do. I don't think as a person I am prepared enough or know enough to be able to handle that level of responsibility, especially when you start thinking about other people and employees and, and all of that. I, I do not think I am ready for that. I think it would be irresponsible if I tried to do it now. So it's something I think about a lot. It's something I might do someday. It's something that could be in like my five to 10 year plan, but it's not something I'm doing now. I'm gonna continue to educate myself and learn more about it and we'll see where it goes. So maybe, maybe someday there will be a Morgan Drinks Coffee Cafe. It will not be called that, <laughs> but maybe there will be something like that. That being said, I am gonna go finish the rest of my coffee. Thank you again for all these wonderful questions. And I hope this was either educational or at least mildly entertaining to some of you. Um, as usual, you can find me pretty much everywhere online at Morgan Drinks Coffee. I upload on YouTube once a week. I also do some shorts on here. Otherwise you can find me on Instagram or TikTok where I upload pretty much every day. That being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I will see you next time. <laughs> Goodbye.